Right, I'm, uh, I'm Richard Amos. I'm Finance Director at Anite. Um, I've been for the last five years. Um, and over the next 20 minutes, I'm going to take you through and give you an introduction to our business and, uh, and what we're doing. Uh, 20 minutes, relatively short period of time. I'm bound to leave stuff out, so please, delighted to take questions at the end, obviously. Um, Agenda-wise, that's what we're going to do. I'll, I'll basically take you through uh, an intro to us. Um, I'll talk about our market positions and our business models and, and those sorts of things. We'll, we'll summarise, etc. I am a finance guy, but I have tried to resist the, uh, the temptation to, uh, to cover you with a blizzard of numbers, but happy, obviously, to, uh, to uh, fill in any details people want in the Q&A. And there are, some, uh, there are some numbers. We've given you an investor fact sheet. Hopefully, you've all got one of those on your chairs. And indeed, there are some in the, uh, in the uh, packs as well. Great stuff. So, Anite, who are we? Um, well, we are, uh, you, you know, we've been on the market since, I think, 1984. Uh, a number of you will have known us in, in a variety of different guises. But actually, this is a very exciting time for Anite. Um, we, over the last 10 years, we've transformed from being really quite a wide-ranging um, IT services company to being now a very focused supplier uh, to the test and measurement mobile, mobile phone space. Um, we, we've achieved this finally um, uh, as of May when we sold our last IT services business, travel software business. So now it's, it's, it's very exciting from a management point of view. We're focused on, on one particular area. We have two businesses in that area, and I'll come on and explain what they do. But basically, we're providing test and measurement solutions to the, uh, to the mobile, uh, uh, mobile industry in, in a variety of different guises. We are UK-based. Um, but uh, we're actually very international. About 98% of what we sell is sold outside of the UK, um, and we've got uh, we've got about 500 plus staff. We're over uh, offices in 14 countries. Uh, a lot of our R&D done here. A lot of our R&D done in Finland as well. And I'll come on and explain why that is. We're at April year end, so the numbers here uh, are, are a little bit a uh, little bit old. But uh, revenue wise, just over 100 million. Uh, we made an operating profit of 15 million on that last year. And, of course, being a technology company, we, uh, we invest an awful lot in R&D, so about 19% of our revenue is invested back into the R&D, all, all of which is charged through the P&L. So that, that's a, that's a P&L charge, if you like. Um, and I should say at this point that, that last year's results were, were, frankly, slightly disappointing. They weren't what we originally uh, hoped we would, uh, we would achieve. Um, and... Uh, uh, we achieved, in the end, what we said we would, but, but during the year we had to reduce our expectations. 2015, the year we're in now, is expected to be a year of recovery. The first half, we, which we reported in December, demonstrated that we're on the path of that, and we're obviously uh, we're, we're planning to continue that through the, through the rest of this year, and I'll explain why. And then finally, just to say, as, you, uh, as, it, as it points out at the bottom, having sold the travel business, we now have cash on our balance sheet, uh, about 30 million in cash, we don't have any debt, and our plan, of course, as well as organic growth and, and, and uh, delivering more, uh, more products organically is also to do some bolt-on acquisitions, and I'll explain about that as we go through. So two businesses, as I say, and what is it we do? Well, we've, the two businesses, um, one on the left-hand side is always has been known as handset testing. We've snappily retitled it device and infrastructure testing now to reflect the fact that our market is changing. Uh, apologies if I, uh, if I get that wrong and, uh, and, and call it handset testing through the beast. That's about two thirds of what we do. And then network testing is the other side. Um, in both cases, what we're doing is we are, we are testing the air interface. So there's lots of things that get tested in a mobile phone, mobile phone environment. Our particular specialism is the air interface, the bit between the base station and the device <coughs> itself, and that's, that's very much where we focus. And both of, the businesses, uh, both of the businesses are looking at that particular area. In the case of device and infrastructure testing, we're providing systems that test uh, in an in a R&D uh, uh, phase of, de of development. So at that point... These systems are being used by R&D engineers developing new devices, developing new chipsets. Laboratory-based testing on the left-hand side. That contrasts with the right-hand side, the, the network testing, which is field-based testing. Here we're providing systems and solutions that actually test real <coughs> live networks and allow operators and the engineers that support operators to make those networks more, uh, efficient and to, to develop them and ensure the best possible customer service. 
So um, two different areas, as I say, both working on the air interface side. So you know, contrast, lots of people talk about network testing, uh, and they might talk about you know, testing backhaul and, and, and all sorts of different networks. Our network testing bit very much is focused on that air interface, and I think that's, that's very important that we get that. Um, we are a product business, so actually we don't do any testing ourselves. We're supplying product uh, hardware and software to our, uh, to our customers who then use that to, to do the testing themselves. Um, and it is, although we are a software uh, predominant business, we also do, do provide hardware as part of our solution. And increasingly that hardware is our own proprietary IP as well. And that's, that's a feature of the business which has developed a lot over the last few years. Um, both of the businesses are high operational gearing and they're high margin businesses. So the opportunities for, for profitability growth are there if we can get the top line moving. So that's really, um, that's really the sort of overall summary. Um, who, do we, who, are we, uh, who are we selling to? Well, uh, we, we sell across the, a very wide uh, area of the mobile um, uh, ecosystem. You won't be surprised to hear the device and infrastructure testing business. It's, it's customers, the device manufacturers are, are you know, very major customers, but as are the chipset providers that are, that are providing the chipsets into the devices. So you can see the names there. They're all the names that you would, uh, that you would know and recognize. Um, and, and roughly, for a device and infrastructure testing, about 70% of what we're selling is going into device manufacturers or into chipset providers. With the rest going in through independent test labs who provide testing capacity to, to those two, uh, two other uh, parties, or indeed a little bit into the operators as well, so as they're deciding whether to accept devices onto their networks. And again, I'll come on to that a little bit further on. The network testing side, their prime customers are the operators, as you'd expect, because they're providing field-based systems for, for live networks. So it's operators or it's engineering organisations that are, are providing that support to the operators. But equally, they sell some of, their, some of their systems through the network equipment manufacturers who are rolling out new networks and, and use us, uh, A, to help in that process of rolling them out and also as part of the, uh, of the solution that they're selling to their, to their customers, the operators. In terms of customer concentration, um, well, you won't be surprised to hear that Samsung are our biggest customer, but uh, uh, Qualcomm also a very big customer in the chipset uh, uh, area, particularly obviously LTE chipsets, the, the new, the latest version, the 4G chipsets. Um, but it, customer concentration isn't that great. No one customer more than 10% of revenues, and top 10 customers around 45% of revenues. So what, what is it really all about? What, you know, what is it that, that we're, we're about? Well, everything that we're, we're doing is, is around uh, dealing with data congestion on the networks. Clearly, networks or, or mobile phones, uh, the, the usage of them is growing, and we're getting an increase in subscription rates. Currently, there are about 7 billion mobile phone subscriptions out uh, globally, and that is expected to rise to about 9.5 billion by 2020. But that isn't just the only thing driving, driving data, data growth. We're also, the devices themselves are becoming more data focused. So whereas five, ten years ago we were using our phones really to make a call and perhaps send a text, now of course we're using them as mobile computers and therefore there is a greater propensity for, for consumption of data. And actually what we are using them for as well is getting more and more data hungry and we're doing more and more video, we're all doing more and more video and you'll be trying to catch up on Broadchurch on the train on the way home or whatever and, uh, and clogging up the networks as you go. So all of this stuff is, is resulting in enormous amounts of extra data going through the networks and, uh, and you know, it's, expected, it's expected to grow another eight times over the next five years. So you know, big data consumption uh, increases. And the challenge in the wireless area, and particularly in that area that I'm talking about, this air interface, is how do you cope with that? If you're in a wired environment and you've got, a, you, you've got more to go down your pipe, then you build a bigger pipe. Uh, and there are challenges to it, but it's, it's, it's obviously not insuperable. However, in the, in the wireless side, your pipe is fixed. You're fixed according to the amount of electromagnetic spectrum that you've been allocated by your government, and that doesn't change. So the only way to cope with increased data, and, 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 and we're obviously running out of that, of that capacity, the only way to increase that capacity is to packet data uh, more, more tightly and to fire it down the pipe faster. 
And that's really um, what the whole of the, the changes in generation from 2G to 3G to 4G, and now there's uh, you know, obviously research going on about 5G devices. That's what it's all about. And what our business is about is about supporting the network uh, operators as they are investing in their networks to cope with that and develop that and build additional capacity into their networks and, and, and really provide testing systems that support that. And obviously, as they invest in that network, so, the, uh, so new devices are needed and the devices need to be upgraded to cope with the new features and functions and the way that, the, that this data consumption is being managed. So new devices are needed and new test systems are needed to, to test those devices. Also, we have the benefit of additional complexity. All the networks uh, that, that, that there are around, you, you're, you, you may well have 4G subscription, but your device will not connect uh, to, uh, from a 4G perspective all the time. Why? Because the networks are not uh, ubiquitous. You might get 4G in this area around here, but as you... As you go back to Waterloo, get on your train to go home, you'll pass through 2G areas, you'll pass through 3G areas. And the devices all need to cope with all of those technologies in order to provide a, an appropriate service. And each of those provides a technical challenge. So if you're on a call in a 4G area and then you, you move to a 3G area, the device has got to switch from 4G technology into 3G technology. That is a technical challenge. And of course, the more different vari you know, varieties of of technology there are within the network, the more of those interactions happen, the more testing is required. So that all of that is meaning that as devices are getting more, uh, uh, having more technology embedded within them, so more testing is required to ensure that they can cope with all of the different challenges they face. So that drives more problems, more testing. And then finally, um, there's more testing coming about because uh, mobile operators are looking to uh, ensure that they're getting the best possible customer service. They're looking to reduce churn. Uh, they're looking to generate more revenue from customers so they want greater availability of networks. All of that is meaning that testing isn't just being limited to engineering departments now, but actually to customer experience monitoring. And that, again, is providing additional testing opportunities. It's meaning operators are wanting to check the devices work well, specific devices work well on their network. So lots, lots of different testing, really. It's not all perfect. Uh, there are some dark clouds, as the, as the, uh, as the uh, slide demonstrates, but I wouldn't want to overplay these. Industry consolidation is something which does from time to time affect us uh, and has affected us, and it, it is a, a feature of the, of the mobile industry. And you, know, you may well have had an Ericsson phone 10 years ago, you may have had a Motorola phone, you know, obviously there, there are lots of, lots of less of those around. Um, our customers include people like that, and obviously we have to migrate customers. So there's, 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 there's movement in customer, uh, cust the customer environment, and that does have effects on us. And all the other thing people point to is, is portfolio, device portfolio consolidation. The fact that when Nokia were the big beast, they would produce 40, 50 new devices a year. Now Apple produce one iPhone a year, etc. People say, well, there must be less devices being tested, therefore. Well, and there is an element of that. But actually, the one iPhone has lots of different regional variants, all of which need to be tested. And of course, we don't just have phones now. We have tablets, we have phablets, we have data sticks, we have all sorts of different connected devices. And of course, we're now getting to the, you know, much, excuse me, much more excitement now about, about the Internet of Things and, uh, and more connected devices. So yes, there is some device portfolio consolidation, but overall, um, you know, there are, there, there's lots more testing going on, and actually that's meaning we see this as a growth market. Lots of data there about that. I won't, I won't go through that to support that, but lots of data to, to demonstrate why we believe this to be the case. The one thing I would point out to people is that you know, L, there's a lot of excitement about LTE, 4G, and the developments from that. We really are in a very early stage still with LTE, although you know, clearly we do have it in the, in the UK. Um, there are, out of the 7 billion global subscriptions, only 350 million of them, so only about 5% of them are actually LTE. So there's a long way to go on the, on the current technology. And, of course, already we're starting to think about where we go now in terms of 5G, etc. So what is it we actually do in, in the handset testing, uh, or the, D, the DNI testing business? Well, if you're going to develop a new, a new device, you and you're an engineer doing that, you don't want to connect it to a real live network for all sorts of technical reasons. So instead of doing that, you connect it to one of our systems, hardware and software, 
that, that basically emulates and simulates the base station and all of the infrastructure that sits behind it. You trick it into thinking it's connected to a real-life network, and then you can do lots of things to make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. And there are different phases of that testing. Left-hand side is the, what we call development testing, so this is the early stage, uh, very iterative testing. You're just trying to get your device to work. It won't look in final form factor. It'll be in a perspex box. And you need to, to, to move components and software in and out in order to get it to do what it's supposed to do. We have a product that, that does that. Based off the same platform, but with different software, we then, we then move on to the next stage, so what is known as conformance testing. And this is checking that your device complies with industry-developed standards that ensure that every device will work with every base station, that, that, that there is commonality of operation around the, uh, the industry. So the open standards allow different manufacturers to all produce equipment that will work with everything else. Known as conformance testing, for any particular standard, there are roughly 500 tests that your device must prove that it can pass before it's allowed to be connected to a commercial network. And we, we provide a system that, that, and we write those 500 tests, we reproduce them in software, and sell those to the, the manufacturers so they can actually test uh, that their device does what it's supposed to, and then they can take it along to the operator and say, we'd like you to sell this device, and here we've proved that it does what the industry requires it to do. Once they've done that, then the, the, then the operator will say, well, actually, that's great, it works according to the industry standards. Will it work on my network? Will it cope with the, 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 the um, specific uh, uh, functions and, and uh, uh, characteristics of my network? And then they do what's known as interoperability testing, traditionally done in the field with people taking devices and just using them and seeing if they work. And we've pioneered bringing that into the laboratory, simulating specific networks, not just an industry standard network now, but specific networks uh, and the specific characteristics of particular operators' networks, and then, and then providing tests that, that, that check the challenges that those, that those networks have. So our, our systems can do that and can enable people then to make sure that the device will work on AT&T's um, uh, network rather than just on a generic, generic network. So um, you know, lots, of different, uh, lots of different products that we offer. Um, our business model is roughly we're selling... A system, an entry-level system, will be three hundred thousand pounds of that sort of order. So these are these are you know big uh, big purchases. A million-pound system with full all the bells and whistles would not be uncommon at all. And we make typically around seventy to seventy-five percent on that. Um, uh, most of what we're providing is is software. There is some hardware, and I say most of that now is, is our own proprietary hardware. And in addition, there is maintenance and support on it. And we upgrade, the, the, the standards change every year, so we upgrade our system every year and people need to, uh, to uh, upgrade their systems in order to make sure they're testing against the, uh, the latest version. So, so uh, that, that we, we, we get a good level of recurring income coming from that, uh, from that, that uh, support and maintenance. So uh, that's, our, that's our, really our business model. Um, we believe that this market here is growing roughly... Um, mid to high levels of, of, uh, of single digits per annum. Not in a straight line, it, it, it fluctuates, it comes and goes, but over a, over a medium term we think it's growing in that sort of area. And we think we can do better than that because our, our, our business is about expanding our total addressable market, ensuring that whereas, for example, under 3G we were really just in that middle, middle bubble, the, the device conformance testing bubble, Actually, now we've spread by, by developing our, our product offering into, into other areas and are growing our total addressable market. And that's, that's very much what our strategy is about for growing here. So that's the, the, what we call the handset for device and infrastructure testing. Looking then at the networks, and so that was the laboratory uh, side of things. This is the field-based testing side of things, network testing. So business actually ran out of Finland a, a, a long time ago, a, a spin-out from Nokia. Um, here what we're doing is we're providing <coughs> operators with a device. It's a commercial device which we will buy, a, you know, a Galaxy S4 or something, and we would flash our software onto that device. So it's, it's, um, it, instead of making a call and downloading an email, it's now recording radio parameter uh, measurements, call quality, data download speed, um, uh, propensity to drop calls, all of those sorts of things. Um, 
you connect it to a, a, a laptop, which then, which then operates the device, you put it in a van, and you drive it around the network. And it enables the operator to take measurements as it goes around the route. The data is stored on the laptop, goes back into, uh, into an analysis tool, which we also provide, uh, which will then take that data and chart that out into a Google map and show you where your network's working well, show you where it's not working well, and uh, allow you to see where you need to send out the, the man in the van with the ladder and the spanner to go and adjust your network in order to improve the, uh, the customer experience. Um, we've got products that do that in the drive testing, which is the main area. Uh, in indoor, we're very strong in indoor, so we actually have handheld devices that you can walk around offices or schools or, or uh, shopping malls, etc., to, 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 to check on indoor coverage. We have benchmarking products which um, enable you to test multiple devices at the same time to check how different devices are coping on a particular network um, or indeed to see how one device copes on your network against one of your competitors' network perhaps. And we have scanners that, that look across a whole spectrum rather than tuning to just one particular channel. So lots, again, lots of different products, lots of different areas. And again here, the strategy is this is a growing area, probably slightly lower natural growth to the... Uh, the DNI uh, business, probably sort of mid single digit growth rates here. But again, by expanding our addressable market, we, 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 uh, we developed the indoor product ourselves, we, we acquired the benchmarking capability. By doing that, we can expand our addressable market and therefore increase our growth above the market, uh, market growth. The grey bubbles indicate the sorts of areas that are adjacencies to where we are currently, and these are the sorts of areas that we might look at to uh, to move forward to, you know, as we move forward. So those are our two businesses. Uh, in terms of the strategy, well, I think you know very much our strategy is we, we you know is to exploit the market positions that we've got within these within these uh, two markets, which we believe, as I say, are growth. Uh, growth markets, and they continue to develop, as I say, for all the reasons I explained about all the things that's going on and the constant in, um, investment that's going into networks to cope with the data uh, increase, um, you know, that there, there will be requirements for new systems in order to uh, to test the devices that come out of that, and, and we will develop products that uh, will enable us to continue to benefit from that. And we will continue to expand into adjacent markets through organic, through R&D, through our own R&D, where we can and where we can't, or where it's quicker or more efficient to do so, then we'll use our balance sheet to, uh, to acquire, uh, acquire positions in, in, into adjacencies. Nothing, nothing transformational, nothing, nothing wildly outside what we do at the moment. Just e expanding that, that envelope and just doing, um, doing extra things which, which give us a greater growth opportunity. And in doing that, we will, we will seek to... to um, you know, reduce other risks that we got around technology, technology cycles, and, and those sorts of things. And we've got a balance sheet that is robust and strong that will, uh, we believe will enable us to do so. As I mentioned, we've got 30 million of cash sitting on it at the moment, and uh, we can do that at the same time as continuing to pay a uh, to pay a dividend. So really, uh, that's that was as, as far as I was planning to go. I think the point here is, as I say, we think or we believe we've got um, very nice positions in, in, in a very focused business now. As I said at the start, it's an exciting time for us. We are we're, we're entirely focused now on this wireless market. We, we're very comfortable with the two businesses we've got. We think there's lots of opportunities for their markets to grow. We've got good, strong, defendable positions in those markets, which we think we can, we can continue to exploit. And then we've got opportunities to, to grow above that, to, to, to grow into adjacencies, both through our continued R&D, but also through, through acquisitions. Um, and, and really, I think that's, uh, you know, that's about as far as I want to go. Um, you know, as I mentioned at the start, we have operational gearing. Our you know, our, some of our revenues are quite lumpy, big contracts, and, and you do need to recognise that in terms, of, in terms of the sort of uh, organisation we are. And we're, and we're, we're you know, obviously in a period of recovery from that point of view. But we, we think we're very well positioned. Uh, we've got a good, strong balance sheet. And uh, you know, we'll continue to, uh, to, to, to you know, obviously pay our dividends. We have a progressive dividend policy. And again, our balance sheet supports that as well. <coughs>